Welcome, and thank you for joining for another Whiskey Review. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the more impressive bourbons I've had recently, Dustin. This oh, is yeah. the Lucky 7, the proprietor, 14-year-old Kentucky straight bourbon. Dustin, uh, you were able to pick up three barrels, so um, just for the sake of transparency, since we will be doing all three of those, this is barrel 81. And uh, comes in at 67.25% ABV or 134.5 proof. Dustin, um, we've had a couple of these. I've been pretty impressed. Tell us, the folks a little bit about this whiskey, where it comes from, and what we can expect. Yeah, so what we've got here, Mike, is dis distillate from Barton Distillery. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have the mash bill, but we'll put it down below. I want to say 78% corn, and then I kind of get a little shaky on the mulled barley piece. Uh What's really interesting is some of these uh, Bartons have come through at barrel proof at relatively low proofs. That's not the case with these proprietors. They all came in at very high ABVs. Mm -hmm. And similar barrels to this have been barreled by uh, the old Carters, uh, by a couple of uh, kind of, you know, more bespoke uh, bars and uh, in Kentucky, they've been able to get the, their own their hands on it, sure. and those usually go for like three hundred bucks. These should be about one fifty retail. I did pay a premium for this particular bottle, about two hundred, which is you know still somewhat reasonable in today's crazy bourbon world. <clears throat> Mad times out there, Dustin. It's always nice when you try a new whiskey, bourbon, or single malt scotch, and you're impressed by it. And uh, you and uh, one of my other, one of our other friends were able to get all three of these. And from the second I smelled these whiskeys and tasted, I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Mike, I we, mean, we've got a winner. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, this bottle got so low because I brought this up to Mike's a uh, couple weekends ago. Yes, Mike and I got into this comparing it with the George T. Stag. Mm -hmm. um, we'll tell you about that once we get to the scores. Sure. And then uh, our buddy Keith came over; he needed to get into it. <laughs> I looked over and I was like, oh my God. I need to get back into it. <laughs> I, pi I, pi I piggybacked on Keith's curiosity. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I wanted to experience it with him. Yeah, like I, I brought it with, like, I'd already had a decent bit of it. You know, I had it down like here. And I'm just like, oh my God, we just went to town. Let me tell you something. If either one of us are talking about the pain of the fill level and the quickness it went down, <laughs> you know, we like that whiskey. <laughs> exactly. All right, Dustin, I tell you what, this is a huge wallop on the nose. Yeah, it is. Candy, uh, caramel, oak. Tobacco, leather. Oh, I mean, it's got everything. It's just dancing around yeah. here. The first note I do get when I first mm. get into this is this sort of waxy, subdued mm. apple note that comes mm. in, which tells me Barton initially. And then it's all leathers and oaks and um, tobacco leaves, which are not Barton characteristics usually. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, of really furniture polish, man, for the most part. You know, I mean, ah, it's... it's Varnish. Yeah, and almost like a, like a lemon pledge almost. It's, it's just that strong. But then it kind of sash... That, that, that lemon pledge citrus notes kind of... It always teeters back and forth a little blood orange with me. Yeah, I mean, I'm even getting a hint of cherry. Not a lot. Some of these are a little more. This one just has a hint. <clears throat> oh, and just a good just char note to this whole experience, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> And there's so much oak and wood in this thing. Oh, yeah. This is, when people talk about old bourbons, I don't know that I consider 14 years super old, but it's getting there. And it this one old. is bringing, it's bringing it. it. Smells old. It smells older than it is. Yeah. Uh, cinnamon. cinnamon yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was say, as soon as you get past all that thing, man, or right when you went in there, man, cinnamon. <laughs> We're back, and I was just like, yep, cinnamon. Yeah, that spice is obvious now. Uh, cinnamon and oak, man. Mm. I, that actually sounds like a delicious cereal. It is, gosh. There's that apple note again. Sure. Some Look, caramel. Caramel, honey. It's almost like a green apple, but it's not sour. It's what it is. I, mean, I mean, I could go for a caramel color, uh, covered apple for sure. At the fair or something like that. Alcohol is definitely prevalent here. You definitely can tell this has got a punch. Oh, yeah. It's not offensive. It doesn't come off, like, negatively. It's just, yep, you're mm. smelling it, and your, your nose is telling you there's alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big, big, bold whiskey. You know, Chewy, oh, yeah, oaky caramel, man. You know, on the level of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know, King of Kentucky. You know, I'm not saying from a quality perspective. Just, I mean, just from a big, bold Intensity. flavors everywhere coming at you. Oak, spice. You know, yeah. uh, sweetness from the bourbon, caramel, just, yeah. I mean, it's, besides all those things, all those high-end, you know, char, heavy heavy notes, I mean, it is still incredibly sweet. There's still 
just all kinds of candies in this. Fresh toasted bread. I mean, I can nose this for a long time. Hint of a lemon lollipop, even. That one came out of nowhere, but I got it. Dude, the lemon is strong in here. Lemon polish, lemon pledge. Yeah. Like, like church oak uh, uh, pews in. that were, ju were just cleaned, you know, just, just before you walked in. Mm. You were the first mass of the day at Christmas. I grew up Catholic, by the way. <laughs> I figured. We spent a lot of time in church. Oh, man. <clears throat> what are you getting? So, as oak forward as this smells, the initial flavor is all sweetness. It's the caramel. It's the apple. It's the cinnamon. It's a little tobacco, a little leather. Vanillas. It's a little chocolate. Toffee. Butterscotch. All of it's in there. Very just intense, rich, wow levels of sweet. And then comes that oak. Layers with... More leather with really nice smoked tobacco leaf. Oh my goodness, Dude, Mike. On the palate. Wow, this is a huge whiskey. On the palate, when you were saying apple before, you're right. It's red apple, skinned, either Bob, but with cinnamon all over it. Cinnamon apple pie, lattice apple pie. But I'm telling you, the second I swallowed, it was the most, it was the most intense but sharp and quick caramel note maybe I've ever experienced on a bourbon. And I experienced it before. And it, again, it was quick and sharp right, right when you first swallowed it, but it was the richest caramel note I have ever tasted, maybe in a whiskey, period. And it ends quick, and it goes to char. Mm -hmm. And then the char just comes back in dirty, dark chocolate. It's just covered in wood chips. Man, that's a fun whiskey. All of these have been good. I've been yeah. impressed with all three barrels. This isn't even my favorite barrel. This is barrel 81. We have 69 and 1. Um, yeah, so... Wow. The other thing that I'm really is unique about this, Mike, wow, is nice. the flavor that's still on my mouth is very caramel. When Usually when you get a 14-year higher oak level whiskey, mm. you have a lot more oak on the finish. And I'm not saying there's not oak as it's finishing... But right now, sitting lingering on my mouth, it's dryness, but there's so much caramel, which, again, normally it's the oak. It's maybe some tobacco leaf. It's some spice. It's caramel, which is just really unique. How heavy the caramel is just still sitting there, you know, 30 seconds after finishing swallowing. There, the caramel range here from nose to immediate finish to linger are three different caramels. All three are interesting. All three, I will remember. Oh, Th this is, is building up to. Yeah, this is. I, I'm actually going for a second sip without water because I want this to keep going for a second. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. This is almost sacheting in a creme brulee on the nose now. What's funny, so Mike, if you kind of you know, mm. you're doing so, like if you you nose it here, like you know, just if your nose just outside, it's creme brulee. Yeah. Then you go into it, and then you get more of the varnish. You're right. And you get a little more of that apple, a little more of the fruit. But outside, it's just... You're right. If you get in the glass, you're smelling cinnamon, polish, and you're right, a very sharp fall apple. Yeah, but if you're outside the glass, it's all vanilla. It's like just sweet candies. Yeah, the Glencairn's really making this making this whiskey dance. Oh, yeah. mm. This is such an impressive whiskey. I'm even like getting like um, Fruit Loops. Yeah, chalky sugar from the, like the you know on the outside those like silly you're, fruit. I mean, you're right now. Now, now the fruits are even dancing around them. lemon, lime, maybe some type of red fruit, maybe like a I don't know if a strawberry or a watermelon. Maybe I don't want to say strawberry; it's not that strong. That's why I'm almost thinking watermelon. I'm almost thinking like a sour cherry. There's cherries in here too. It's like apple and like a sour, I mean like a legitimately soured cherry. With cinnamon and, you know, infecting all of it. Well, there's a, this is a cinnamon bomb, man. Yeah. Beautiful cinnamon. Red hot gum. Ah, sweeter than red hot gum, though. It's more candied than that candy, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and it's got... Yeah, way more sugary. Yeah, I was going to say, like, there's, there's like, just like powdered sugar on this thing. Yeah, I told you. I mean, it was a candy shop as well as being one that was like super oaked. But in a great way. Like, it still comes off fresh and popping. There's nothing like dank or just, you know, spoiled about like the oak note. 
Because that's, you know, sometimes can happen. But again, There's no offensive all, oak notes. All here. of these have been impressive. Oh my goodness, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful <clears throat> nose. And I'll tell you what, Mike, it's actually making my eyes water a little bit, nosing it. There's so much alcohol coming through. And yet when you drink it, it's not offensive at all. No. <laughs> that caramel note right away, man, is next level. I'm telling you, that is such a candied caramel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you're right. At first, it's and cinnamon that's, apple. That's such a bright, bright note. It's a candied caramel. It's not caramel. Which I know it's candy, but it's like it's a, a candied. It's like they added more sugar. It's like you know, it's like, the, <laughs> like it melted down at the bottom of the machine, mm. like at the fair afterwards. You just, just dug it oh out by my hand. God. Wow. Look at the legs on that, by the way. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but those are rich legs. I've, I've got. Dude, I'm telling you, the oak note in here on the nose with a little bit of water is almost coming up like, it's it's coming up so smoky. Almost like an Isle of Whiskey smoky. I mean, it, it isn't supposed pita, that's not what I'm saying, but just the smoke building up in the glass from it. There is a nice charred smoke element from the barrel, for sure. Um, and it's, it's, the end of the, it's the end of the nose, it's got that for sure. It gives you... Because, a, I mean, it makes me think, again, like tobacco leaves that have been slightly charred. Yeah, it gives you the whole range. It gives you super over-the-top sweetness. Heavy red spice. And then really good charred oak notes. Man. I mean, I wouldn't call it incredibly balanced, you know what I mean? Or interwoven perfectly. But there's three pillars of this whiskey and all of them stand tall. I don't know, Mike. I think it's pretty well put together. I think... I didn't mean to be harsh. What I'm saying is, is you know... I mean, you, there, there, there are three separate notes that you get at different parts well, of the whiskey got, I think experience. it's got good transitions, but I feel like they all... There's a start and a stop. You know you're, what room yeah, you're in. I mean, yeah, you're right, but I, I love that about this whiskey because you don't get that in bourbon very often. Okay. Bourbons are usually very... Here's my sweetness. Here's my oak. Buddy, here's I'm, some finish. I'm, I'm, I'm We're trying all kind to, of the same. Well, I'm trying at this point to be a little critical of something I would like a little bit more because this whiskey is delivering on a lot of levels. I mean, I'll tell you this. I think it's a little coinly sweet with that apple note that Barton's famous for. I think that's not my favorite. Mm. I, I could use a little bit more of the aged, antiqued vanilla I get in older whiskeys. Other than that, buddy, I got nothing to complain about. And all I'm saying are... If it was my favorite whiskeys, have these two things that are different. King Kentucky, a little bit more of again of that aged element. Lost Prophet, twenty-two year old, which should have been barrel proof. And if it were, it'd be epic because it's that Stitzel Weller antique vanilla. Um, this is missing those two notes. That's all I got. Yeah, it's not missing a lot. I would love to have this whiskey at the beginning of fall when the the, the air was crisp. Mm -hmm. The humidity was out of it. Say you're in, you know, in the forced hayride, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some type of pumpkin show that that time of year. This is, it's just starting to get cold. And you're thinking, yes. I'm going to dress stupid. I'm going to put on plaid to flannel. <laughs> or boots. <laughs> All right, man. Or <laughs> boots. We are. We, this is what 60 you, people just unsubscribed. <laughs> this is, I mean, I got boots. <laughs> I, I've been doing pumpkin show lately. Um, this is one that again I, I've really liked every one of these I've tried so far. So I'm really anxious to you know get these out here so a lot of people can you know take a look at what these are really all about. So obviously that leads to my next point. Where are you at as far as a whiskey score on this one? Uh, screw it, ninety one. Let's go big. Uh, I don't enjoy this as much as say King Kentucky. I probably enjoy this as much as William Heaven Hill. Didn't we give like 92, George 93 to King Kentucky's? Yeah, I mean, I like King Kentucky's a little bit better. But, Fours. but again, um, even though we started out um, Rocky today in our, mm -hmm. our tasting notes, I'm right there with you. This is a 91. That's, that's, this is probably top five bourbon that I've rated on this channel. So we talked about this little intro earlier. 91 of 100. We had this and the 2020 George T. Stagg side by side. Yep. It this was, was clearly better. Close. Clearly better. Clearly this better. This was the listening. obvious winner. Yeah, and I know stags are different from year to year. Yeah. You know, if we had the 17, I don't know. But 17 I, I, was really good. Yeah, I, but I know this was significantly better than the 20. Um, this is a more or, balanced or, 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 or whiskey. Or was, than was it the, the 21? There wasn't a 21. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was the 20. Yeah, yeah. it was right. It was the last yes. release, which yes. was 20. Yes. So, um, yeah, it, it outperformed it by a nice margin. Yeah. And that's a great whiskey. No, it was, I mean, it's, that's not a bad whiskey. It has some 
There were some flaws, obvious flaws. To the that reason tag. the reason we bring this, that up is not to talk negatively about the tag. The reason we say that is to show you to showcase just how good of a yeah, whiskey this is. is. Literally competing with the best bourbons ever made. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, at least it, in the modern world. Yeah. It, modern it, bourbon. Modern thing, thing yeah, it's definitely in the conversation. We can't comment about you know 1960s distilled uh, chess, you know, old Fitz Chessman or whatever. Love to. Old Crow Chessman. Yeah. Maybe we'll get to that someday. But anyway, um, let us know what you guys think. If you guys had a chance to try one of these again, this is barrel 81. And uh, Dustin also has 69 in barrel one. So those are also impressive whiskeys. If you guys had a chance to try this one, let us know what you think. Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Drink more bourbon. Yeah, this is, seriously, this is a good one. For, if I'm saying it's a good bourbon, it's a good bourbon. Yeah, this is happy drinking, Mike. Absolutely. <laughs> Where are we at? Have, yeah, have a drink. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>